I am not fixed up very good. I, well, I you're don't. all right. <laughs> That's fine. Well, we're we're rolling, so go ahead. All right. I am Mary Call Fuller. And I was born in Syracuse, Utah on January the 8th, 1909. And I'm now 81 years old. Uh, I was born to, uh, to the union of Mr. and Mrs. William W. Call. I was born upon the hill uh, on the old call farm, my grandfather's place. And my dad got up in the middle of the night and they went to grandpa's place and uh, I was going, uh, my mother was going to stay there while my father went to, for the doctor to Leighton. Uh, um, um, I can't tell you how many miles, but it was about eight or ten miles. He had to go to get the doctor in the buggy, and I, and my mother stayed there to my grandfather's house, and it was there I was born. Uh, he didn't. They didn't get back in time to go home, so I was born to my grandfather's house. And who, my, who was and your my grandfather? My grandfather was Cyril J. Call, and his wife was Sarah Kent Call. And uh, I was I was born in the morning at four o'clock, and it was mighty cold outside. And it was January the eighth. And believe me, I struggled in this old life, and I've had a hard life, sort of a hard life from there on in. And I now live at the Garden Retirement Home. And I've been here for 11 years, and I've uh, uh, partook in all the activities, and I've taught a class of poetry here at the garden for two years, and I teach the Bible class, and through my years, through my life, I taught school, and I taught the retarded children, and uh, I, of course, and, and I taught the retarded children, and uh, I taught the physical handicapped children, and I am physical handicapped myself. And I taught from a wheelchair, but let's go back to Syracuse now. How long did you live in Syracuse? I lived there, I lived right there for eight years, but I was back and forth, oh, every few weeks. And I went to all the reunions, and I remember when I was a child, I went to the first schoolhouse that was built in Syracuse, and it was a one-room deal, and we had central heating in that schoolhouse. But what I mean by central heating, it was that we had a stove in the middle of the schoolhouse, in the room, and it was an old-fashioned pot belly stove. And I remember the teacher putting all the papers in the stove that she didn't want. And oh, I love to watch the flames in that stove as it, uh, as it burned up those papers. Did and they have several grades in one room? Yes, we had uh, we had eight grades in the one room. One room. And I was I went there at the first grade, and I remember all about that. And uh, Ruth Parker from Hooper, Utah, was my first school teacher. And behind, directly behind me, sat Bruce Walker. And uh, you remember Bruce, maybe. But he was a, he was a red-headed boy, and he was the meanest little boy. And I had long hair, and he used to put my braids in the inkwell, <laughs> and the. Uh, he I've heard all, of that being done. <laughs> and he he did all the mean things to me that any little boy ever did. And he loved to put toads in my desk. And, and I would very often come in and find a snake or a toad in my desk. 
and I would scream, and I knew that Bruce had that, and Bruce was also born in Syracuse. What year would that be about? That he was born in same year I was, 1909, and he was my first bull, and he was from Syracuse. But he used to be here, and he died in this place here. Uh huh. Just last year. Hmm. The, the Maybe school, it was two years. I don't remember. The school uh, desk were they one pupil or two pupils wide? Mm. Two two students sat on were one, just one. Well, we had benches some of the time. We s sat oh maybe four on a bench. Mm -hmm. When we had our spelling bees, we sat four on this long bench, and the boys used to compete with the girls to spell. And uh, I learned uh, a good deal there at the Syracuse first grade school. Mm -hmm. And we used to have recess and we'd go out and uh, at recess and some of us would get hungry. So we'd eat cheese at recess. And they used to make those great big cheeses down to Hooper. And my dad used to go in the buggy and we'd go down to Hooper and get those big, great, big round cheeses. And I used to think that was so special. And we'd go out at recess and eat cheese. And I love cheese to this day. Do you remember where that uh, Hooper Dairy was? Yeah, I remember it. But I don't remember a lot about it, but I remember when they were building the first high school in Hooper, and it was just, just directly across from the gay, old Gaby place, right on the corner. And uh, we'd go down there and watch them build the high school. After school, we'd go, come from our school. And Peter Christensen lived right down west of the high school. Uh, my, my sister Portia. Oh, I remember Holt Portia. Went, went to that school and my brother Bill also. Uh, Portia was my sister's best friend, and many times Portia come to our place, and she'd push me in swing. I remember I was just a little. She lives here in Ogden, and she has been here and seen me. Oh, good. Uh, she came on oh, not so awful long ago. Several. Well, it's been several years, but uh, mm -hmm. you know I. But I love Portia. Uh, your father's um, middle name was Warren. Yes, William Warren Paul. And uh, how is he tied into James Warren? Well, he he belongs to another family. We're not relation to them. Only my aunt was a Warren, and her name was Jenny Warren Paul, and she married Harv. Oh, my breath, my okay, I knew we'd get tied in some way there. Uh, my my dad's brother was was uh, he married Jenny. Do you remember Jenny? You do. Yeah. yeah. And she had red mm -hmm. hair. And oh, I loved Aunt Jenny. Mm -hmm. And uh, her property was west of Leo's. Well, our property was just north of Leo's. Yeah. Leo Warren. Lawrence Hodson? Yeah, I knew Lawrence too. Oh, oh, was your property where his property was? Well, he bought our property when we moved to Malad. Okay, now I know where you were when you said the call, call him. Did okay. you know Lawrence Call that used to live in Syracuse? No. Uh, well, his dad was my grandfather. And my grandfather was Cyril J. And my grandfather's place was right across the street from Frew's. Do you remember Ann Frew that lived on the corner? And she lived right on the corner. And beyond her was the Knightons, Bill Knighton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know him? Mm -hmm. Yes, well. Less, less Frew. Well, less Frew, uh, it must have been a son. Yes, Lance was a son. And his wife, Lola, is still alive. Is she? 
Oh, I'd like to see. And she that. lives. She lives up there, and her daughter Eva Jean is still there. Oh, do you remember Anne Frew? It seems like a can, just vaguely. Well, uh, see, okay. uh, my aunt uh, Jean Stoker was a Frew. Would that be? Well, I remember Jean Stoker. But she was from Clearfield, wasn't she? No, Aunt Jean was a Les Frew's sister. So it must have been Anne Frew's daughter, oldest daughter. She married Oswald Stoker. Well, I remember Oswald, too. He was uh, Bishop about that time. Yeah, Bishop Stoker. But when I lived there, and remember, and when I was little, uh, Bishop Nalder was the bishop, Frank Nalder. Do you remember him? Yeah, uh, well, I've heard a lot about him. He lived up the street just from where we did. Oh, uh-huh. Well, you didn't live on the same street that I did, though. No, we're on 17, what is that, the Syracuse Road. Well, they didn't have numbers or anything yeah. when I was there. Well, we're th east, east of the, of the church, east, east of Central Merck, three oh. quarters of a mile, just... Jess Holt was my father. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Well, I remember when they had the old canning factory there, the tomato factory, and we used to haul the tomatoes down there in a wagon, and we had uh, we had some frisky horses, and uh, I used to go, us kids used to crawl on the wagon, and our dad would take us down to the old cannery, and we'd take the tomatoes and these horses, every time the train would whistle, they would jump and run, and they used to, we used to haul the tomatoes, and one day the tomatoes, we took them down there, and I remember these tomatoes just a flying in every direction, they jumped when the whistle blew, and I had to cling on so tight, and my dad, oh, he, he lost lots of tomatoes. Going up and down that hill where Gailey's lived, you know. Mm -hmm. Is that is the cannery that you're referring to? Is that near Gailey's or is it west quite a ways? Well, it was a little bit west of Gailey's. Okay, be down Straight south. 000, I guess, south. I can't tell the numbers or anything there now, but uh, we used to haul all our tomatoes down there at the cannery, and my brothers helped build the old first high school that was built in Syracuse. They call that North Davis High School. Yes, that was the North Davis. And I can tell you just how it was situated. And we used to play along the creek there, right by the, that come down the side of the high school. And uh, my younger brother and I, we used to sit or play on the creek and we had watched them build this high school. Oh, I thought that was the only building in the United States. To me, that was just wonderful, because mm -hmm. I was only six years old mm -hmm. at the time. But I remember so plain my brothers, and they used to work on this high school. And after after I come from school, I'd, we'd stop along this ditch bank and they built this high school. And I thought that was the only building in the United States. And I thought it was the only high school. And, my walk, and I used to walk down to this high school. You walked to school. And I and walked walk. three miles in the snow and the sand in the spring of the year was way deep. I remember that. And I remember taking off my shoes and stockings and walking in the sand. But I thought, oh, it was wonderful to, to just have a school. But that old schoolhouse, we used to have religion class in the school, mm -hmm. in the schoolhouse. And uh, I was just a part of it. And I loved Syracuse. And I thought that was the only place in the United States that was named Syracuse. And then, when I was eight years old, 
I moved away, and we went to Glad, Idaho to live. And Aaron Cole was, uh, uh, he was my, his wife was my mother's sister, and they lived farther on down to Syracuse, and they raised pigs, and I remember they had, oh, they had lots of pigs. And uh, they used to, they had an old smokehouse down by Peter Christensen, and we'd all take our hams and to be smoked, and he'd smoke our hams. And he had a son named Wallace, and I remember him so good. And, and uh, the Gailies, there was Irma and Marie, and there was Frank Gailey, and let's see who else. Marlon. Marlon, I remember. Ted, that. Edwin, Ted. It's oh, her, I remember her father. Ted. That's my dad. I remember Ted, and I remember Bessie, and she used to live right with, on the corner. Right on the corner. I remember that, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't remember as good as I used to. But I remember a lot of people. There. Was Was David Gailey, the father, still alive then? Yes. Old Dave, we used to call him Old Dave, and we used to get all our water to drink to the Gaileys, and they had a flowing well, and we didn't, and we'd take the horse and buggy and big barrel and go down to Ted Gaileys to get this good water. Oh, am I talking too much? No, no. Just tell it. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, here. anyway, we used to raise lots of strawberries out to Syracuse. And that was the only place where we could raise nine big strawberries that would fill a cup. And that was the only ground in the world that would raise that many. I thought, oh, Syracuse is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, Where did you market your strawberries? Did you have them? Uh, well, we used to put lots of them up. I remember that. And uh, we used to bring them over to Ogden uh, once a week in the White Top. And my mother used to drive over with the horses. And on the way to Ogden one day, one of the horses went to sleep. And the strawberries were getting so mushy and we were in the sun. And the horse laid right down and went to sleep. <laughs> it was so tired. And I can remember that. And I was quite a big girl. You know, mm -hmm. and it was a fun deal to live there. That's all there was to it. There was no place like Syracuse. You mentioned uh, you're talking about the Gailies. Do you remember uh, the coal yard that David Gailey had? No, but I remember the Rampton blacksmith shop. Blacksmith shop. Okay. I remember George Rampton, and oh, to me that was a wonderful place. And he has a daughter now that lives in here now. Vern Rampton's wife is in here. Do you remember her? Vern or, or uh, Henry? Oh, may, I mean Henry. Mm -hmm. I was thinking she's, Vern. she's in here. Huh? Yeah, she's in here. She Geneva. Right over across the hall. Geneva. Hmm. Uh huh, Geneva. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's a sweet person. Mm -hmm. But. It the school was right down by his blacksmith shop, yes, wasn't it? Yes, was it was right down there. And we used to go to the blacksmith shop and watch him chew those horses. And the teacher used to have to come over from the schoolhouse and get us to go back to school because we was watching George Ram to chew the horses. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was the most wonderful man. And then there was Mr. Criddle and there was Mr. Knighton. And Mr. Beezer used to be our our uh, home teacher, and he would come early in the morning, and he'd stay all day and have dinner, and he'd stay. And I used to think, oh, he comes and and he he was a grand old man, but he give the longest lesson <laughs> I ever heard in my life. And I was just a kid, but don't let me talk too much. What What do you remember about uh, Criddle, you mentioned? Well, Is this William Criddle? Yeah, William Criddle, and his son runs the service station right here on the corner, Craig and Joanne. And Joanne is my niece, 
but uh, William Priddle, and I knew Mr. Wilcox out there, and I've forgotten his name. William Wilcox, or Delbert. Well, I knew them both, uh, and I also knew this Mr. Mr. Beezer, and I knew Nellie Beezer, and she used to be my school teacher, and I knew uh, all of the Ramptons and uh, the Knightons and the Crews, and oh, there's so many people out there. Well, I knew them all. And after we moved away, we used to come back there to the uh, ward reunions and all the fine things. And I remember my grandpa, the thing that I remember about going back to ward reunion was grandma, he had had a terrible cold and they put a mustard plaster on him. And while they were there, and he wore it to the reunion, and while they were there, he got to dance with and I remember he was dancing around and having just a, a heck of a good time. And he lost the mustard plaster on the floor. <laughs> and there was this mustard plaster. And I remember Mr. Knighton come along and kicked it underneath the bench. And he says, that don't look so good. <laughs> when you say Mr. Knighton, would this be William? Yeah, that's William Knighton. He married Emma Bodley. Yes, and I knew all the Bodleys. I knew Rob and Emmy Bodley and all of them. What about and the father? Bodley and What Mary. about the father? Well, the father was uh, Rob Bodley. Of, of Myron, those. Uh, yeah. What about Rob Bodley's father? I guess Joseph. he probably wasn't still alive then, was he? I, did, I, I didn't know. We're that. talking about 1917. No. He, that was before, or that might have been after, but I don't remember the father, but I remember Rob and Emily Bodley and Annabelle Bodley. Do you remember Kate Stoker? Yes, I remember Kate, and she was a heavy set lady, and I remember, and I thought, oh, she had long hair that she could sit on. She'd have a big bob up at the back. Do you remember that? Yeah. And she I, used to be a midwife. Was she still doing that? No, Esther Sessions was a midwife. That's that's a half sister to Kate. Yeah, well Esther uh brought uh helped to bring me into the world and my brother. Uh but I remember uh, uh who else? Uh what was the boy's name? She had a big boy that used to come to our place so much. Esther I've forgotten. Holy? No. El Elmer? There was another. Elmer, Elmer Sessions. I remember. He was him. a cripple. Yes, he was. But I remember him, and he used to come to our place. And he used to, uh, oh, I remember he liked bacon. When he come to our place and have supper with this needy bacon, but he'd go out and play with the ball with the boys, and he'd, they had him as the tag boy, and he'd get the ball with it, you know, run away, and uh, Royal Rampton used to come to our place so much, and Leo Moss, do you remember him? Do you remember John Moss, the, uh, when they built John Moss built his home in Syracuse, that yellow brick one. Uh, oh, I thought that was the most gorgeous home. And we were out there not so very long ago. And you know, it, it's just a house. It's, mm -hmm. It is in the castle. Mm -hmm. But it, to me, just being a girl, it was just really a yeah. castle. Probably Lita, George and Lita Stewart's home, isn't it? Yeah. Either that or uh, Lucy, Lucille's, I'm not sure. Uh, and my grandfather's Lucy house was just Lucy down from John Moss's on the corner. And yeah. Was on, and my grandpa's house was on the uh, west side of the street. Uh, Syracuse has always played baseball. Were they playing baseball then? Yes. Uh, Where? Uh, down on the diamond. The down. It was 
seems like it was across from the schoolhouse somewhere, the ball diamond. On the barns. And uh, the barns diamond. Royal Rampton and my brother Odell. Oh, it seems like Royal. They was all playing ball down there, and they had a, a wonderful ball team. You think it was on the opposite side of the schoolhouse, the street from the As schoolhouse? As I remember it. Yeah, they got several indicate that. Uh, as I remember, it was on the east side, wasn't it? The school was on the east side. The school was on the east side. Mm -hmm. And the ball diamond was across the street on the west side. Oh, yes, I remember now. But uh, I remember we'd go down to these ball games and Odell used to give me a nickel if, if I'd stay home with my brother. If I wouldn't go down to the ball game because they were all boys down there. And they didn't want kids down there, of course. And I remember going to the canning factory a lot, too, down there. And uh, I've got a sort of, I, I don't want to tell you all these things. <laughs> Why not? You want all you know. <laughs> well, you know, I. What kind of pranks did you do in the canning factory? Uh, we used to tip over all the outhouses and the, all the four holers, you know. And we used to, uh, I remember we went down to Gailey's once and, and we stole chickens out of the chicken coop and, and uh, we took them up. Where did we go? We went to Christensen's. To Wallace Christensen, and anyway, we went there and we said, told them we brought them some chickens, and they was already dead. We didn't dare take them home, <laughs> and so we took them over to Pete Christensen, and, and I remember Wallace and his sister Bessie. Was she a Gailey? Mm -hmm. Bessie Gailey. I remember her and Irma Gailey and Marie. And Marie moved to Layton, and I kind of lost track of her. And I don't know what became of Irma, either one. They're all gone now. They're, are they all gone? Mm -hmm. Marie came back to Syracuse and married... Uh, Ern Hansen. Ern Hansen. Oh, did she? I don't remember him. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I remember in Syracuse that the old smokehouse where they smoked the meat down, it was down there by Peter Christie's place. And we'd, we'd go and take in the buggy. My mother, I remember, she used to wrap the hams and we'd hook the old buggy up and, and go down there to this smokehouse and leave them all there and we'd get them smoked and then they'd pick them up by buggy. And I remember going in this old buggy and the darned old horse was balky. And we, when we'd get all ready to go, and go out and get the buggy, it wouldn't go. And I remember once my father said he couldn't make it go. It just wouldn't go. It just balked. And so he, uh, he started a little fire underneath the horse, and boy, that horse just went a sailing down through the field, and us kids was having the best time. And we were hanging on the back of the buggy and having fun. But that's neither here nor there, but anyway, yeah. My childhood, happiest time of my life was spent in Syracuse. You remember a little, uh, little store or a little confectionery by the high school? No, I I don't remember Look that, but I remember D Dan Walker's old store. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. That was way down there, and there, and there was Dan and, and his brother, and they run this store. And, oh, I thought, oh, that was the most gorgeous store. And the candy there was just out of this world. It was just wonderful. And he always used to, we, us kids used to go to the store. And he'd give us all candy. And there was Ephraim Walker, too. 
that used to live there. There's Dan and Eve and uh, Jane Walker and all of those people. But uh, I remember Billy Beezer. Oh, I remember him so much. He used to come to our house a lot. And William Criddle. He used to, him and my dad used to sing solos together. And my mother was, uh, she had the first, uh, let's see, she had the first chorus that sang in the old uh, Syracuse church house. And she used to teach mutual. And uh, she'd go and sing. And uh, she belonged to the Williams that used to sing all over Davis County. And uh, she, her sister, May Hatch, she lived in, in Clearfield and she married John Hatch. And they they had that cinder block, the first cinder block house that was built in Clearfield, right down below the tracks there. It, it isn't quite as clear as to me as it used to be, but uh, from time to time, you know, I'd go back and I kind of know about things. And if there's anything that you think you can ask me, I told it all to you, I guess. <laughs> but uh, Bishop Nalder, I remember when we go to Sunday school, I remember him helping us out of the wagon and we'd file in a line and go into Sunday school. And I remember my little brother, just younger than me, he was kind of noisy. But the bishop would take us by the arm and he'd help us along the, down the aisle so we wouldn't be so darn noisy. <laughs> and <laughs> we'd sit on the front row and and uh, Nellie Beezer was my Sunday school teacher. Do you remember her? Nellie. Nellie. Oh, she was a wonderful person. Was she married? No, she was an old maid. She was an old maid when I was just little, you know. And I never, ever did remember ever, ever marrying. Did Must have Billy's been. Billy's sister or something. Billy's. Well, it'd be a daughter probably, uh, Mark and all of those sisters. Oh, well, Mark was a, was a son and... Uh, Dawn. Dawn. But they were, oh, they, it seemed like they were 100 years older than I was. I was just a kid, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't, I don't remember too much about it. But uh, if you'd like to read my history there that I have in your book, and I was... Do you have any extra ones we could purchase? Well, I've only got five, and I've got them all promised. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, ward reunions. Where were they held? Oh, well, they were held in the old Syracuse first building that I remember being there. Amusement hall? In the amusement hall. And my brother, he always used to sing at the re ward reunions. And uh, he used to stand up and sing. Uh, when you wore a tulip, when I wore a tulip, and somebody else wore a rose. So I... Big red rose. Big red rose. And my brother Odell used to always tap dance to these reunions. And I was about, uh, oh, I was about 13 then, I when guess. When you come back. Uh-huh, we'd come back from up there, and we, Syracuse was always our home. You know, we'd come back and we were invited to everything. But I was quite a big girl, you know, you mm -hmm. you remember quite a bit mm -hmm. when you're 13. But anyway, my happiest time in my life I spent in my grandfather's gooseberry patch, picking gooseberries, you know. I'd like to know where I could get one of those now. <laughs> But we used to pick gooseberries there. Gooseberry pies, remember yeah, those? We had gooseberry pies, you bet. And those were the good old days. And I had long hair, 
and I could sit on it. And I was just about eight years old, maybe six. And we'd go pick gooseberries and I'd get this long hair tangled in the gooseberry bushes. Oh man, and I used to cry when my sister yanked my hair out of those bushes. And we'd pick gooseberries down there and we... Currants? And currants and pie plant. I remember that old pie plant, a rhubarb, rhubarb. we call it now. And we'd go along this bank and pick the rhubarb on my grandfather's place. Asparagus? Yes. And, we, and I remember uh, my dad dug a well and oh, it was a dandy. The water come in and it was so good and cold and we thought it was so wonderful. And after they got it all dug and had the diggers there and struck water, why the next morning we went out there and it had caved in. <gasps> that was the most horrible thing. The Call family have a well cave in on them after they would paid all that money to that good man to come and dig it. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember my mother when it, she saw it was all cave in, how bad she felt. And I remember I felt bad too. But I remember we used to go skating down there somewhere. It was below where the canning factory was, and we'd skate. And I remember it was a big pond, and it, there was a fence around it. And it was somewhere, I don't remember. Down near the lake? Well, it wasn't quite to the lake. Was it Miller's Pond? It was, I don't know whether it was Miller's or not, I can't remember. That'd be way down the bottoms. It was way down the bottoms, but on Saturday nights, we all used to get in the covered wagon, and we'd all go down the lake to take a Saturday night bath, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And, oh, we used to have fun out there. Do you remember any of the celebrations they held on the 4th or 24th yes, of July? Yes, they used to. I remember uh, George Rampton had the first, first Model T Ford I had ever seen, and he brought it to the celebration, and he used to give us all a ride from there up to John Moss's place, and he charged five cents a ride, and I remember we'd all get in the back seat of that Model T Ford. And I used to cling on so tight, my hands would just be blue for fear I would fall out. <laughs> I remember that. And, oh, an automobile. A really, truly automobile that would run. That was the most wonderful thing. And George Rampton had one of them. <gasps> Oh, he was such a rich man to have an automobile. Hmm. And it was a Model T with a honk on the outside, I remember that. Hmm. And those were the good old days. Hmm. But this isn't exactly what you people come to for. Yes, it is, you bet. That's exactly what but we want, isn't it? I remember I remember when we used to haul the water from to drink from our place to Gailey's and we'd take a great big barrel and my sister Myrtle and I took the old pony and we hooked it up to the buggy and we got the barrel in and we went to get the water and the horse coming back we had this barrel right full of water and I had this long hair and this crazy old horse heard the train come along there, or the box, uh, the old fashioned thing that they called tomatoes with the train, I guess. Why, the horse heard the train whistle and she jumped and the all this water in the barrel come back and threw on me and we wasted all that water and I remember it darn near drowned me. There was <laughs> so much water, but it just soaked my hair, and we had to 
go back and get some more water. We had to dump all that out because my long, long hair got in the barrel and we couldn't drink that water. So we had to go back. I remember my sister turned the buggy around and we went back down to Gailey's and we dipped the water with a, a you know, a kind of a dipper thing and filled that barrel up. And I said, how many thousand more dippers of water do we have to fill that barrel? But we, that was when we were digging the well at our place that we had all this, all this drinking water. Mm -hmm. But uh, the horse run away and she ran up the hill and my hair was just a switching. I can see it now. It was just switching back and forth. Uh, and when I got home, I said to my mother, I've been down to Gailey's and I got baptized and I was just <laughs> ringing wet. I remember that just as plain as day. <laughs> and uh, we used to raise tomatoes and we raised watermelons and strawberries. Did they steal watermelon in those days? Oh yes, and they stole green apples too. And they'd come to our place and steal these green apples. And I remember uh, once in our house, we, my brother and I, we raised up the window and the, somebody was out there stealing green apples. And I said, I remember, I said, just as plain, I hope you get the belly ache <laughs> from those green apples. But uh, oh, we used to raise lots of peaches and pears and all that kind of stuff. And oh, that was, Syracuse was the most wonderful place to live. And I remember when we moved away and went to the land. I remember I, I cried for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And my mother asked me what I was crying for. And I told her I didn't know. I didn't know why I was crying, but I was crying because we had to go and leave all those good people in Syracuse. Any particular reason why you left Syracuse and went to Milan? No, we bought two farms, and my dad went up there and lost everything he had. We went up there, and he lost $50,000. He bought a lot of cattle, and uh, he bought them cheap, and in the war kind of, uh, he bought them. He paid a lot for them, and then uh, things, the depression came, and things went wrong. And, I, you know, you don't pay much attention to that, but he lost everything he had and he come back to Malaya, from Malaya. We come back to Ogden and he worked on the railroad. But he, Grandpa gave all of his sons ground in Syracuse. He divided up his farm and he, I remember he gave us 22 acres and we sold it and went to Malaya, Idaho and we sold that ground for $400 an acre. And we went up there and and my dad lost everything he had. Mm -hmm. uh, and he come back and he, if he had kept those 22 acres, we'd have been millionaires by now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. But anyway, I remember my mother cried so hard when we left Syracuse. And, and I did too, because I had to leave, you know, the kids that I knew in school and that, and it, and it hurt me. What was your mother's maiden name? Where was she from? She was from Bountiful, and her name was Sarah Louisa Willie, and she was Jed Willie's daughter. And uh, when they were first married, my dad and she, they lived out on those old salt flats way down there, almost to the lake. I don't remember it, but uh, where they lived or anything, but I've got the history of it and everything about it. But uh, I remember my dad used to hook up this old sleigh and horses. One time uh, he hit, hooked up the horses and we went sleigh riding and we went all down up down the lower part of Syracuse, 
a bike up for, and we'd go down there sleigh riding. And uh, one night we was sleigh riding. Well, I was quite a big girl then, but uh, I don't know how old I was, but we, he hooked up the horses and, one, and uh, we drove the horses so darn far that one, one of them give out. And so we went home, I remember, and I must have been, this is, we'd, I'd come back there. I'd been up to the land and we'd come back there and he, the, one of the horses give out and I remember him going up to Grandpa's and hooking up a cow with a horse and we drove that old cow all night uh, just about a long ways and the next morning it had a calf and oh Grandpa was so mad at us and I remember I, I don't know how old I was but I remember We'd gone back down there to visit her on some occasion. And we drove that poor old cow and horse together all night long. I remember that so plain. <laughs> but we, I had lots of fun when I lived out there. My eyes be quiet now. You don't want to hear any more. Well, maybe we wore you out. Maybe we oh, ought to. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. But I, uh, I remember uh, we used to have a, a smokehouse and the schoolhouse and the, and the cannery and the high school, and I thought that was a city. I thought that's no place, no place could they have that many things in one one community, and I just thought that was the only place there was. That was your shopping mall. Oh, yes. I was really in seventh heaven, but... Uh, I've talked too much. No, you haven't. That's what we want to hear. But you know, yeah. that's uh... Well, you remember a lot for just eight, well, eight years being there. Well, for living right there, because we moved yeah. away. But like I say, I was back and forth to my grandpa's and grandma's a lot of time. And, and when you're a kid, you don't forget stuff, you know. Mm -hmm like that and and it's all honest and it's from the bottom of my heart you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and I know when we done the history of Eden up where I lived up I find you damn before I came here you know that I lived in Eden for 54 years mm -hmm. and uh, to me it Horses. And you still take Syracuse over Eden, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> I lived there for 54 years, but I love Syracuse. Well, but those young tender years, they're the and, most precious. You know, they, they ride in your memory all the sweet things that you yeah. like. Yeah. But Syracuse, to me, it was always such a wonderful place. Well, that's where I was born, and that was my home, but uh, to me it was wonderful, and there was nine of us kids in the family. Hmm. Now, how did you say Aaron Call was related? Aaron was, uh, his wife was my mother's sister. Do you remember Aaron? No, but we've been, uh, I know where he lived, down down, kind of down in the bottoms, it seems like. Well, over, he was up on the sand ridge, but well, it was well, over. Not too far up on. Well, no, it was right next to the Bluff Road. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know what you There's talking. Aaron and another brother, but they're not, the calls are not related then, huh? Well, I was the calls, yes. Yeah, but my you, dad you said it's your mother's but sisters. My, my dad was a call, but he's a he's a brother to Lawrence Call. But how was how was your dad and Aaron Call related? They were brother in laws because his wife was my mother's sister. But they both had the call name, but they yeah. weren't related through they the calls. They were cousins. They were cousins. cousins. Okay. Uh -huh. And the Aaron Call's daughter was Thelma and Genevieve, and you probably know all them and. Uh, 
Cecil. You've talked to some of the Cole sisters, haven't mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Oh, Genevieve. Genevieve. And, uh... What was the name of the other one there? Yeah, we've had a chance to visit yeah, with a couple of those. And you have talked to mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. Well, if you yeah. if you talk to them, I ask them if they know me. They sure know me. Because sure they they're my cousins. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're wonderful girls. Yeah, they, they and gave us Lorena a uh, call, married uh, Wood, you know, the yeah, sells that's the, the one. Osmobile. Lorena, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's when we went and visited. Lorena. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Which well, she's uh, gone. He owned Wood uh, Auto there on Washington Boulevard. Uh, 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 she's she's down in some condos there in South Ogden. That's well, we went to uh, Lorena married uh, Wood. His mm -hmm. name was Wood, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, oh, you know, I'm old lady now, and to remember all these things, they kind of leave me. Tell us something about these paintings. Oh, Did well, you, you paint this one right up here. Yes, I never painted with a paintbrush until last year, but I, mm. I didn't start to paint until I was 79, mm. Mm. and I. If you, when you go out, you notice those that are in the front room, we had an exhibit. I've had an art exhibit here for two days. But uh, all my good paintings went in the raffle. They sold them, and these are just some that I... Is I these had. Indian Indian paintings yours? Oh, yes. They're every one mine. And I did this one with the Savior, and that's a reprint. Hmm. Uh, it's pretty. But I'm not, I'm only an amateur, and when I get real good, I'll sell some of them. They look good enough now to sell, don't they? Mm -hmm. But anyway, I've had a lot of fun with it, and I've had a lot of exhibits. Mm -hmm. And pull that one out and look at that one. I did that one with a sponge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty, pretty enough. But I did 200 last year, wow. and now I'm going to start and work for next year for the raffle. With the money that we sold. Springtime, the, the wildflowers, and so many things happened. In the winter, it was cold. I, I don't think they had a, a, a bit of any type of insulation in that house. You could imagine what it would be like. Uh, but they were happy. I don't know if it mentions it here on the plaque that she was a, a teacher and she taught her uh, children well. And they were learned. Once they got into school, they were above the other students, uh, especially Guy and Grace. They, uh, without hardly any formal education, they were brilliant. And they passed many hours doing uh, things. And the favorite thing was, was when she played the organ. She had a beautiful singing voice, and so did Bumma and, and the children, and they sang many of their favorite favorite songs. But life was not dreary. Bumma was very active, not farming. I think most he ever farmed was probably five acres. He was enterprising, and he loved the, the sea. He loved the ocean. And uh, he will be able to uh, get a boat called the Water Lily of Twila, named after uh, the city of Twila here to the south. Uh, a fine sailing boat, and he did excursions. He discovered uh, uh, petroleum off a of promontory and got involved there. Nothing to come of it, just like his his uh, ranch. They found uh, gu guano on on what we know as Bird Island, Gunnison Island. It's supposed to be bird fertilizer, uh, millions and millions of tons, and he's going to become a millionaire, and others got involved in it, and they found out it was too old, and it wasn't, they were even going to send it to, uh, to the Sandwich Islands, which we know as Hawaii, to, to help grow uh, uh, pineapple there, and, uh, well, I could go on and on uh, uh, with some of these enterprises. And a after Alice dies, uh, uh, he 
gets with the railroad and helps, I think, building the trestle across. And Grace, your, your mother and some of the other children went on the first train that ever crossed the Great Salt Lake across what is known as the Lucene Cutoff. And uh, Bob, uh, you, you've done an exceptionally fine uh, job, so I'm not going to say much, much about uh, the death of, of, of Alice and, and the tragedy in that, but I, I want to for the Walker family say that, uh, and, and you probably know this better than I do, that we, uh, Will Walker and his children were at Lagoon. You said it was Lagoon there at that time in 97, 1897 when she died. Yes, it started in 1895. Bamberger owned it. They were at Lagoon and they saw the three fires and Will said, hey, we've got to go. We've got to put all of our things together. We've got to go back to the island and they come uh, uh, to find out that uh, she had already died. I think it took them about three hours to, to cross over. And uh, there's other neighbors, uh, Will Bentley, uh, wife Ida, they called Aunt, Aunt Ida, was able to come over and uh, they took the youngest child. Uh, her name was uh, Florence Hope. I often wondered why they called her Florence Hope. Now Dora, she was known Dora, uh, known as Dora Ida, and I, I know why they called her Ida because of, of, of Ida Bentley. Anyway, there was so many close ties there. Uh, Joe Simpson's here today. Where are you at, Joe? He, uh, he's Ed. You mean Colonel Hodden? Yeah. Yes, uh, Ed felt that it would be a tactical advantage to go down on the deck.